Right, good evening, councillors, uh, and those in our actual gallery and those joining us online. Welcome to the July ordinary meeting of council. We have joining us online from the US. Uh, Amazing grandmother, Councillor Novella. Uh, so she'll be joining us. She's joining us online at 1 a.m. in the morning over there on a rather warmer day than it is here. Uh, can I ask you all please to be upstanding for the oh yes, no, just uh, apologies from Councillor the Follow that comes after the the long, so we'll continue that. But if we can please be upstanding. Um, acknowledgement of, count, uh, of country. I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the country of the Dajra Rong. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the area on and their forebears. We acknowledge their living culture and their unique role in the life of this region. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. In council prayer, Almighty God, we ask you to be present in this council, direct and guide our deliberations. We ask you to grant us wisdom and sensitivity as we deal with the business of our shire. May each decision that we make advance the building of all our residents. This we pray. Amen. Thank you, councillors, executive, and uh, both the gallery. Welcome again to the July meeting. Um, item two apologies. We have apologies from Council Elizabeth Long, who is unwell and uh, therefore is not joining us, and hope that she gets better, better soon. No other, no other apologies. Uh, we have no leave of absence. Um, uh, we have a, a little bit of item four uh, disclosures of conflicts of interest. Councillors. Disclosures of conflict of interest. Any constant conflict of interest? Um, yes, I have in I have in 8.1 Mera 50 meter outdoor pool. I am my company is the contractor to the council who operate the Mera 50 meter outdoor pool. Okay, thank you, Councillor Murphy. That's noted. Councillor Sprout. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a uh, conflict in the notice of motion by Council Lovett. For the Maribara North Residential. Okay, so noted. Okay, yes, and welcome to, uh, and I should have done that earlier in terms of welcoming everyone else. Welcome to our new general manager, uh, Infrastructure Assets and Planning, uh, Mr. Matthew Irving, who joined us from a rich background of uh, local government experience. We did establish whether he was a country boy or city <laughs> boy, and we have seen that he's a country boy by background. So, but in any case, a warm welcome uh, to, to you and uh, look forward to welcoming you. He's already made his presence well known, but it's your first council meeting. So, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for reminding me about that. All right, confirmation of the minutes of the previous uh, previous meeting. Any concerns about the last uh, uh, the meeting of the of June, our ordinary council meeting? Any concerns about that? Look good to me. If not, we'll proceed to confirm those, those minutes. Move to item six, minutes of delegated advisory committee and, uh, committees. We've got two. We've got the uh, minutes of the audit and risk committee, and the uh, and also uh, we have the minutes of the Talbot Town Hall meeting. Two sets of meeting to note. Councillors all happy with those? Any questions about those minutes? Okay, well, let's move then. We've got no petitions. Let's move to officers' reports. And item one, noting Councillor Murphy's declared a uh, conflict of interest on that, the Mirabar uh, 50 metre household. So we'll 
let you leave. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Hope Councillor Murphy has left the chamber. And councillors seeking a motion. Relation to eight point one. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move that Council one endorse the closure of the Maribara 50 metre outdoor pool until it can be demolished and rebuilt. Two, continue act advocacy to state and federal governments to seek funding support of up to $6 million to undertake the proposed works. And three, endorse the following proposals which are to be monitored and reviewed to ensure the best outcomes for the community. Free entry to the pools at Denali and Tolbert. Open the Denali and Tolbert pools on Saturday the 3rd of December and close them on the 13th of March. From 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. School holidays, weekends, public holidays and 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. on school days. To extend the hours at the indoor pool on Saturdays, Sundays and public holidays, opening from 9am to 7pm, excluding Christmas Day. Organise a freezer and engage initiative to provide free vouchers to the indoor pool for young people. Advise schools of the situation and offer some financial support to enable them to, to bus students to alternative pools for their swimming carnivals. And advise the Miraburra Swimming Club and the Miraburra and District Triathlon Club of the closure with an offer of payment of the higher fee to enable it to run its tournament, its major fundraiser at an alternative venue. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Lovett. Is there a second to that? I'll say second. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Councillor Lovett, I'd like you to talk to the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Many people throughout our community will be shocked by this decision to close Maribara's outdoor pool. This decision has not been taken lightly and is an absolute last resort after considering multiple, multiple reports by structural engineers. One report stated, if radical action is not taken, there is a possibility in the near future that there could be catastrophic failure of the 50 metre pool. Although this decision is correct, it must be stressed the closure is not permanent. The pool will reopen when safe for the community for community use. I think it's important to recap recent history. In 2020, funding from Heritage Victoria was received to carry out restoration works on the Olympic pool. In 2021, Creo Consulting conducted an audit of all the pools in Central Goldfield Shire, Tolbert, Denali, Meribara, and Meribara Sports and Leisure Centre. Additional funding was received to address issues re-compliance raised in that audit. In 2022, Ontoit were contracted to manage the pools project. They were also asked to develop a scope of works. On toit claim, remedial works at the Olympic pool would be a short-term fix only and presented council with three options. Option one, a patchwork job costing $745,000 with a life expectancy of weeks to months. Option two, repair the pool basin membrane cost $2.3 million with a life expectancy of 10 years. And option three, demolish the pool and rebuild, cost four and a half to $5 million 
with a life expectancy of 60 to 85 years. Historically, I believe realistically, it's probably remarkable that our pool has lasted so long, 80 years. The new pool when constructed in 1939 was built on the site of a marshy area adjacent to Lake Victoria. Known locally as Pools Dam, after Councillor Sam Pool, who was a former mayor and had advocated passionately for a new pool for Mirabara. Ironically, this was to replace the existing baths where our children's playground is now situated, just out here behind us. The new 50 metre pool was dug manually by unemployed labour under the most atrocious conditions, with the draining of groundwater being a constant problem throughout the construction period. For those who might be interested in Betty Osmond's book, Against the Odds, on page 281, there are two excellent photographs of the, of the Olympic pool under construction and completed with the pavilion. And you can see its close proximity to Lake Victoria. Proper restoration of this iconic pool is not only important to Miramara and Central Goldfield Shire, but also to the state of Victoria. Miramara is the only Art Deco swimming complex still operational in Victoria. Throughout this entire process, Council will be working very closely with Heritage Victoria. Together, we will ensure all heritage elements are preserved. For example, the tiles on both the 50 metre pool and the children's octagonal pool will be carefully removed and where possible, reused or used for reference. There will be no demolition hammers that destroy the existing pools. The Art Deco Pavilion will also be restored as per the heritage overlay and the requirements therein. From the beginning of this process, Heritage Victoria have been and will continue to be central to this restoration. Council will leave no stone unturned to ensure the total rebuild is carried out so that our community can look forward to using the complex for the next 80 years. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Lovett. Councillor Lovella. Um, as Councillor Lovett said in the outline, the costs, uh, remedial works will be short term patch up only and won't address the increasing decline of the pool shell. I see patch up as a waste of money and throwing good money after bad. 80 years, Councillor Lovett said it's been in situ. Of course, it's going to decline after that period of time. The fact that we now have been informed by pool expert pool engineers, it now becomes a safety and risk to council and indeed the, the community. And it, should we not address this, it becomes derelict in our duty to protect the community. I believe the alternatives outlines um, in the swimming venues this coming summer are excellent options. And I think we're accommodating the community very well, utilising what we have in both Talbot and in Denali. So in the interim, this is what we have to protect our community for now. But I'm look forward to seeing it rebuilt into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Novella. Other councillors? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? 
Item 8.2, Community Grants Recommendation Report. Oh, you forget, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we'll go on with that. Thank you for that. We'll get Councillor Murphy back in again. Councillor, I was going to go on to the next item. We'll talk about you, but <laughs> no, don't come back again. We need you. We know that Councillor Murphy's re entered the chamber at 6.16 p.m. Uh, it's when it's to 8.2 community grants recommendation report 2223 is the <coughs> item. Uh, Council is seeking a motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Councillor De Villiers, a seconder. Oh, yeah, uh, August, okay, Council. All right, uh, I, you'll go to it. Okay, thank you, Councillor De Villiers, a motion. Yeah. Um, thank you. So the, oh, I always do this. It's where the hard copies come in handy. The recommendation is that council approve the recommendations for the awarding of funds for the community grants program 2022-23. Okay, thank you very much. And the seconder to that. <laughs> Councillor, okay, thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Davidi is talking for her. Um, thank you, Ms. Me. Um, 26 applications were received for this um, round of grants. It's always a pleasure to award the, the, this funding and to go through the applications and to see what people need help with. And I think uh, post COVID, um, this has been very welcome. And, been well received by the community. So congrats, so we received 26 applications. Three were deemed ineligible, so 23 applications were awarded. Congratulations to the successful applicants. And um, the successful applications, I would just like to um, emphasize, is listed in this um, agenda for people to have a look and to see where they got with their applications. Um, I would also like to note that the officers are proposing a review of the community support policy, um, and it's mentioned as such in the officers report, um, the community support policy needs to be reviewed, so thank you for that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Yes, um, first off, you've got to be in it to win it. Um, there's, I think there was, uh, what did you say, Council, there was 26 and 23 got funded, 14 got funded. Um, so that, what, what it means is that we still, there's things that weren't funded, which were, which were probably, um, didn't have the right infrastructure or you know, the right program or whatever, but I, I, as I you have noted in the briefing, that there wasn't a lot. No, it's 26. There wasn't the right things went in at the right time, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, I don't see enough. I don't see enough people put things in. You know, then I then I see uh then I hear, oh, you get anything from the council or no one's helping us or this and, <laughs> and I'm and really sometimes some of the clubs need to look at these grant programs and say, how can we do it? How can, how can we do it? Now, we've got organisations here that that um, got granted $4,000 and they're putting $1,000 in and they get they get little athletes. It's a good one to see that. It's, so what I'm thinking that there's organisations out there, if, if you want to get something new in your kitchen or if you need something new in your equipment or if you need things think about this for next year it's going to be changed a bit and each year um, the council puts it up a little bit and so it start, started i don't know how much it started it was a couple of years ago but i know it's gone up this year a little bit so that's one thing i'd like to say the next thing is i'd like to say to all the, the groups that are actually um who actually been awarded and i know i know for a fact that as most of them have. But when we're buying things out of this grant, we we really could be looking at buying uh, locally and 
uh, making sure that we get the things local um, and making sure that we support our local businesses, our local builders, our local plumbers, our local infrastructure situation. So uh, if you buy it local, buy it local. Um, there, there is places to buy local and I would hope that everyone would look at buying local who have been awarded this grant. Thank you. I need to make a correction. This statement I made. Correction. Yes. I said that twenty six applications were received, but what I sort of missed was three applications were ineligible, and only fourteen projects were yeah. awarded. So I'm sorry. I apologise for, for that. Thank you for clarification. Uh, other councillors. If not, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. Item 8.3, the 2022 Local Sports Infrastructure Applications. Councillor seeking a motion. Councillor Murphy. <coughs> the motion is, councillors, that the council endorse the following grant applications to the 2022 Local Sports Infrastructure Fund. The female friendly facilities at Delidio Reserve Netball Courts and council contribution of $242,569. And planning for the urban bike park at Bristol Little, our lovely Bristol Little, yes. with council con contribution of $35,000 plus a $4,875 as in-kind project management. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. A second to that? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bella. Councillor Murphy is talking for the motion, please. So I'm pleased to, to, to go forward with this. Um, at, uh, the rationale for this is, which is in the report, but I'd like to speak on it. So. People in the audience, people online, you can understand. A condition this is a Delidio Reserve netball course construction. It's a construction of two netball courts with lights. So, in the, in the, in the guise of the female friendly <coughs> facilities, netball courts are in female friendly facilities space. Rationale condition and compliance audit report identified significant issue, issues. Both courts have major structural damage. One is really is unplayable and has been decommissioned. The current competition court is non-compliant and regular remedial works are becoming less effective. The lighting is not the training standard. The report notes that to ensure a long-term outcome planning to reconstruct these courts in the near future is recommended. Netball is popular denial with increasing participation levels particularly in junior, in junior levels. If the courts are not brought up to standard, up to standard, the club will have to find an alternative venue which will involve traveling to neighboring towns with the result of lots of participation. It's proposed to mark one court for multi-use activities, which also could be used by the school because the school's right next to it. And I think that's a plus. The school is just over the road. Now the school comes over, can use these courts, they use netball, but the multi-purpose one could be a variety of sports and the school could do, do their sports there. So it works, it's a work situation. So the total cost of the project is estimated at $970,276. Uh, the council contribution to $242,569. So we are requesting $727,707 as requested from SRB. That's what we're trying to get. I think it's a win situation for um, for Denali and for the reserves, and, and especially how much work Denali the Delilio Reserve Committee puts in, and and how they work hard on their facilities, and how we how it is in need of being done. The second one is the urban bike park at Bristol Hill. Well, I can imagine that uh, uh, Councillor Councillor Grace Lavalle will probably want to talk a bit about this. But I'm going to jump in before you, please. So at Bristol Hill, we've got a concept plan for the urban bike park, which is including the velodrome behind, which was developed during the development of the walking and cycle 
in strategy. This was followed by some community consultation, which indicated support for the proposal. Council's walking and cycling advisory committee, Council Lavella is on and Council uh, Long is on, which commenced meetings in late 21, has now developed an action plan, which includes activating the urban bike park concept plan as a high priority. A draft briefs has been prepared as part of the application process. The total process, project cost is $69,875. Uh, the price council contribution is $35,000 plus in kind management by the recreational of 4,900. 30,000 have been sought by SRB. Now, this situation in Bristol Hill is, is, is an ongoing from what's happening in Bristol Hill now. The Rotary Club's involved, DELP's involved, trying to get the getting the actual tower going, uh, open again and making that open, but also about the surrounding grounds, surrounding area where the you know, some of the mine shafts are and, and the, um, the old cemetery is and that. So all this is tending to be a one thing. So um, so we should just keep going forward with these situations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Bella. I'll unmute. Well, thank you very much, Councillor yeah. Murphy. You're leaving me with nothing to say. But I, there is a correction. Councillor Long does not sit on that committee. There we go. But the 2022 Local Sports Infrastructure Fund, which is LSIF, is a statewide competitive Victorian government investment program that funds the development of high quality, accessible community sport and active recreation infrastructure. And what we have here in Central Goldfield Shire certainly sits within that scope for the grants and I am very confident, very confident we will receive that grant. That's all I have to say. You said it all, Councillor Murphy. Perfect. Councillor Bell, we know on the issue of membership you definitely had the last word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other councillors wanting to speak to this? Not I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. Item 8.4, the 2022 Community Satisfaction Survey results. Councillor seeking a motion. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move that Council note the results of the Community Satisfaction Survey 2022 Central Goldfield Shire Council and support the proposed next steps. Thank you. A second to that motion. I'll second. Councillor Bell, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Sproul, I'll be talking about Through the Mayor. Uh, these are an annual metric that Council and the community can use to track satisfaction within the community. The survey consists of 400 random phone calls. I know some in the community have uh, been waiting uh, to see these results and hoping for improvements. I admit I was a bit dismayed with the results. Some I can understand and others leave me a little bit more perplexed. There's a fair amount of information to absorb within the report and encourage the community to read it. This also may help with comprehension if you are ever one of the phone participants in the future. Good, bad or otherwise, um, council remain consistent with previous years on most areas, except for customer service, waste management and sealed roads. Can't really comment on the customer service, but for waste management, I can only assume the insecurities around the four streams of waste, glass recycling, container deposit scheme, are some of the contributing factors. Uh, ultimately, we need to analyse the data further and look to continually improve for our community. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Lavella. Uh, well, thank you, Councillor Sproul. And, and yes, I, I suspect it was very disappointing to a lot of people. But from the outset, I believe the survey would not reflect positive results, given it was taken off the back of a two and a half year pandemic together with a newly elected council without time to prove their worth. I am absolutely confident the community will see positive results in the foreseeable future. 
A great deal has been achieved behind the scenes in the past two years, as in planning, strategies, etc. Some tangibles have come to the surface. However, many have not, but that is all to do with time and timing. I can confidently say yet again, the community will see tangible outcomes in the not too distant future. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Other councillors? There are some things I'd like to add to that, in particular, thank you, Councillor Sproul and Councillor Vella. Building on some of your points, Councillor Vella, that you've said, um, this is always a question of timing. These, these assessments are always historical. They're, they're undertaken mainly uh, in February of the year. And the questions relate to the 12 months preceding. So essentially, it's in with council, council's first year of the elected council. And as you said, Councillor Lavella, um, second year of COVID, uh, one of the other um, survey consultants uh, uh, noted that uh, for generally this, of course, with the impact of the second year of COVID exploration played out very much. Certainly, we can see in our own consulting group that covers the, the, the councils that we're part of, uh, a decline both in similar size councils and statewide. We remain consistent, um, although not, we haven't gone down, but not at the level we want to be as Councillor Sproul indicated, uh, and as you did too, Councillor Lavella. Um, last year, before we started the survey last year, I wrote to the Minister about a few things on behalf of Council, said, look, this is an area we want to see some improvement in, but it will take time. I really believe it will take time and, and this, this is shown. The key important thing is this is about our first year. Council direction is right on par with similar size councils and uh, uh, slightly above well, one point, essentially the same as all, uh, as all councils statewide. That's the important thing. First year was about setting direction in a whole lot of ways, including the council plan, a range of strategies and so on. And we, we sort of clocked up where we needed to be. Uh, as you say, Councillor Bell, over time, I think that will actually go up because things that will be delivered from that council direction and that will that will boost it further. But I'm, you know, I think you should be really pleased at least that's where it needs to be and it was, was there. A bit disappointed about uh, the community engagements. You put so much work into that. But there again, with COVID restrictions, we had to cancel things that at short notice, we had to go online. That never works well for our community because of our telecommunications problem. I understand that. Lobbying, well, the first year we were setting direction rather than the folks on lobbying, but there again, as Councillor Bella said, some of the projects had not yet come on board. Others, we had some staffing difficulties as we had difficulties sourcing the contractors, so they weren't completed. And some of that lobbying is playing out now, has played out since. This was done, such as the return, the, the uh, having uh, passenger rail services to Maryborough and back at weekends, a very important win that came after this period, and other things will play out during the election period. Local roads were frustration right throughout rural Victoria. I addressed that today in the uh, in the Maryborough at the time. <laughs> we're working on that. We do the best we can with, with, with the, the, the money that we have. Uh, we have to perhaps spend more time spent engaging with our community and explaining those things, as well as work with solutions which include growth and trying to get the state government to uh, take on some of our bigger roads, which the Treasurer at least is prepared to entertain. So he realises the problems that small councils have. So um, all in all, uh, customer, customer uh, satisfaction is disappointing because our staff work so hard. But as the CEO reported recently in the very advertiser, as we recognise the council, um, our systems weren't geared for, for this sort of problem. Uh, in the past, we've put so much money, we've every cent we've had into roads and things that we really want. We've probably neglected our own house too much, and that's being addressed. And and, this, and we've got the funding now to put in place uh, better systems there. 
Uh, so look, all in all, work in progress. I agree with you, Councillor Vella. It will go up, it will go up, it will take time. But we're set in the right direction. It's paying off and it will go up, uh, go up. And the quarterly surveys, I think, will give us a better informed basis as other councils are moving into. So uh, all in all, work in progress, but we continue that work as we say with Councillor Vella. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. Item 8.5, Mary Brown Aerodrome Task Force Term Extension. Councillor speaking a motion. Councillor Sproul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that Council acknowledge the good work and efforts amid disruptions and, dislay and delays provided by the task force within its initial term. And two endorses an extension to the term of the Mariborough Aerodrome Task Force and its existing members for a further 12 months until August 2023. Thank you very much. A second, uh, Council Murphy. Thank you, Council Sproul. Over to you. Uh, through the man, uh, this is merely uh, uh, just to extend the um, time uh, for another 12 months. Uh, at the beginning, when they were formed, there were some hold ups and delays, but nothing. With that, other than that, thank you, Mr. Okay, thank you, Council Murphy. <laughs> um, as Councillor Sproul said, it's just a formality, but just we also need to remember that this is this council, and through Council Lovett in November, when we first November 20, November 20, November 20, November 20, November 20, yes. November 20 that uh, November December 20, we we actually it became a priority and and it has worked it has worked well in what we're doing and this group has done an excellent job and the council officers are doing a good job out there the site's been cleaned up and they're happy with that and we we're going forward with it so something that um as a group we're going forward and i to, to extend it for another year is it's, it's important to keep them on board because these people these people know what they're doing and they're experts at working with the council officers who are experts in this area. It seems to be working. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Any other councillors? Councillor Bella. Yeah, I'd just like to say this recommendation is a no-brainer. The task force, like many other committees, has been plagued with the unintended um, circumstances of COVID, et cetera. No face-to-face -face meetings. Um, I don't like uh, what we do across the seas or whatever we do. I like face-to-face -face meetings. They know what they're doing, as Councillor Murphy stated, and another 12 months is certainly my expectation. Thank you, Councillor. Any other ones? Any other councillors? Just saying, look, this, this, we knew this was a community priority. As you said, Councillor Murphy, uh, it was made a council priority at our first meeting. Uh, we've made the task force is, is delivering, will deliver, continues to be a council priority, absolutely, upwards and onwards. Good things, I suppose, for what craft, aircraft to be upwards and onwards, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, all good. Let's, let's go ahead. Put the motion, all those in favour. Uh, item 8.6, Youth Council Membership Endorsement. Councillor seeking a motion. Councillor Vella. Yes, I uh, recommend, the recommendation is that Council endorse the successful applicants of the Youth Council expression of interest process as the Central Goldfield Shire Youth Councillors and the Youth Council Plan Project actions outlined in this report. Thank you, Councillor Bella. A second to that. Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Councillor Bella, if I need to talk to the motion, please. Now, this program is one of the most powerful initiatives we as a community are fortunate enough to instigate for our youth. The Youth Council not only empowers our young, but enables them to view our Shire from their perspective. It also assists in moulding the Shire's future by engaging and empowering our youth to guide decisions for their future. 
to expand on this, it's not only guiding, it's also promoting confidence and sound leadership, which is invaluable at a young age. I was very fortunate to be part of a youth council in my previous uh, life council and 98% of the membership went on to be leaders and or mentors in their field of work. One is now an assistant director of the Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Communications for the federal government and has set his sights to be a federal minister advisor. He's only 27. They say this is a re the result was of the confidence gained around the youth council table. Nothing can stop our young if given the respect, the belief and the <coughs> chance. This is such a fabulous initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bella. And that, that's really created a high on that one because it is an exciting initiative. Uh, Councillor Sprout. Uh, through the Mayor. Uh, as Councillor Lavelle said, this is a great initiative to uh, come to fruition. Youth bring richness to our community every day and they often contribute in ways that go unnoticed. The Youth Council will go forward with four main goals. Uh, one, to create a platform which young people can provide uh, advice to the Central Goldfield Shire on plans, policies, and strategies and projects so that they reflect the needs of young people. Two, to engage with young people to identify their short, medium and long-term priorities. Three, to advocate on issues that directly impact young people. And four, to provide opportunities for young people in the central gold fields to develop as leaders within the community. Uh, this project is funded until December 2024. 13 applicants were successful uh, and I'm personally looking forward to meeting them. Uh, hearing their ideas and thoughts. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Councillor Sprout. Any other councils? I just wanted to add, having been involved in the process of the selection of these, um, uh, the, the, the committee that have now been, been appointed, um, what a joy that was. I mean, we should be, I'm just absolutely blown away at the quality of the applications, thoughtfulness of the candidates. Their, their commitment to the community, their commitment to their peers, and their, their, their desire to achieve and contribute. I, I think it's absolutely thrilling. I agree with you, Councillor Bell. You, um, this is an exciting initiative for us. And I think as they develop uh, and the opportunity to work with this council is, is significant. Pay my real uh, respects to uh, and credit to our youth team, and uh, I think they've done a fabulous job bringing this all together. Uh, really exciting, very, very exciting, and um, uh, part of our future in many, many ways. Put the motion, all those in favour, carried. Item 8.7, Councillors, introducing this motion, can I say, I think from more recent uh, briefings since the uh, since this report has been prepared, uh, there's a view of Councillors that we need to do some more work and that some more consideration is required on that. So Councillors, inviting a motion, unless it's not sort of but perhaps inviting a motion to defer this issue for further consideration. Councillor Murphy, are you happy to so move that we defer? Alternative motion to defer to a later council meeting. Okay, thank you. Is there a second to that? Councillor de Villiers, did you want to talk to it or just we recognise the more work to be done? Did you want to? Well, to I that? could, but I'm sorry. Happy to do Other councillors, or are we happy to simply defer <coughs> that pending some more work? I'll put the motion. All those in favour, those against, the motion is carried. Item 8.8, .8, planning permit uh, 018 slash 21 for broiler farm at 683 and 705 Barring Hub Road, Carrisville. Councillor seeking a motion. Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move that Council, having considered all matters generally required under the Planning and Environment Act 1987 and Central Goldfield Shire Planning Scheme, resolves to grant and issue a planning permit in respect of planning permit application number 018 21 
for the land known and described as 683 and 705 Barring Up Road, Carisbrook, for the use and development of the land for a broiler farm, Class A, with a capacity up to 400,000 birds, and ancillary caretakers dwelling with associated building and works within the farming zone in accordance with the endorsed plans and conditions as detailed in the officer's report. Thank you, Councillor. I'd like to second this motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor, I would invite you to talk to me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As this planning permit application satisfies all requirements of the Victorian Code for the broiler farms, it will be approved tonight. However, I would like to make some comments. Within Central Goldfield Shire, we now have a number of established broiler farms. Carisbrook, in the Strathley area, on the Malort Plains, and now on the Car Carisbrook Barring Up Road. Because this application satisfies all Class A requirements, it is therefore exempted from the need to be publicly advertised. I personally have an issue with this. Royal farms, by their very nature, can be devising. To me, it is a simple courtesy for abutting landowners to be informed of a proposal. If all requirements of the planning scheme are met, as with the case, there is nothing for them to fear from the neighbours being notified. And I think that's a weakness in the broiler farm code. One unforeseen consequence of broiler farms is increased usage of local roads by heavy vehicles. This story has unfolded in recent years with some Shire local roads deteriorating years prematurely. For this proposal, there is a designated route for trucks to follow. However, we all know it's human nature. Drivers will find the most convenient route, and this may not be on suitable roads, and therefore brings a cost to the Shire. This permit requires, and I quote, dead birds must be collected daily and removed from the broiler farm site while being appropriately managed and disposed of. My question is though, but where? I believe our Carisbrook transfer station is not licensed to accept protressable waste or commercial waste. So rhetorically, I ask, are the dead birds to be transported to a licensed facility somewhere or simply dumped down a mine hole, which I feel is totally unacceptable? In my opinion, we as a council not only approve applications, but have an ongoing duty of care <coughs> to ensure permit conditions are maintained for the well-being of all of our residents. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Uh, Councillor Murphy. <coughs> Firstly, I um, concur with my copying made over here, Councillor Lovett. Uh, concur about the, not, not, uh, especially about how we don't um, have to put it out to the public that this is happening because of 400,000 birds and really our hands are tied a bit, uh, tied and stopped a bit. It's, um, I mean, it comes to us because it has to get, it goes through a system and then it gets passed, but everything in the, in the, in the code is done, so that is fine. It's, that's how it is, but we should be able to still say to the neighbours, this is happening, this is happening. The other one is that there's 43 points in this in this uh, area of the um, 8.8. This page is 149 to 172. And if, um, I know there's some people in the audience today in this gallery, but also that if you're online, if you really 
would like to read this, you should read it and, and get it in your head and understand these things, what, what happens. But as Councillor, um, as Councillor Lover uh, tested to about uh, roads, I know what takes my fancy is uh, engineering. Point 30, Hearses Lane roads. Hearses Lane to be constructed from Barron Up Road to 25 metres north of the main entrance to the proposed development. The road to be constructed to accommodate B double trucks with a minimum payment width of 6.6 .6 metres and design depth of payment to be verified by self-grade and payment and payment materials testing. Now I'm sure this is going to be overseen by our, our planning department. I'm sure it's going to be overseen that um, in the right area of our building area. So it's not just that. 31, the intersection of Barron Up Road and Hearses Lane is to be asphalt overlaid with 40 mil thick 10 mil aggregate type H asphalt for 50 metres in length, 25 <coughs> metres either side of the centre line of Hearses Lane and 25 metres into Hearses Lane. Prior to this commence on any roadworks, the permit holder must submit detailed construction plans and make further application so we're going to make further application for and have approved a consent for works permit. All works constructed or carried out must be in accordance with the approved plans permits to the satisfaction of the responsible authority, which is council. Now, access. This is what council, part of what council level was talking about. The use of the land must be carried out at all times in accordance with the requirements of the endorsed traffic management plan, including that access to and from the broader farm site must must be from Hearses Lane via Barring Up Road. Now, I believe this next one will be very much a situation that council laws, council itself and council officers will be looking at carefully. No alternative routes are permitted <coughs> without approval from the responsible authority. Again, cancel. The intersection of Hearses Lane and Internal Access Road must be designed to accommodate B double trucks to the satisfaction of the responsible authority. So we, the council, still got something to do with this. Um, we just got to make sure that uh, they don't try and do other roads. And if that does happen, we need to we need to know about it. But in general, that we we just uh, go to pass. I believe we're going to pass this because it's uh, a situation of four hundred birds in the code, and we just have to go forward. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Other councillors, Councillor Lavella. You know, I, I guess I've got a few questions without notice. Um, Councillor Lovett mentioned duty of care, and that's what we, that's our job, and permit conditions to be upheld, upheld. You did mention also about the, where is the frequent dumping of the carcasses? Now, that's a question I never asked myself, and that's a question without notice and probably won't get it today, but I'd certainly like to know the answer of that, to that. And who is responsible for the reparation work on that road? That is a council road, or does the facility take some responsibility for the frequent traffic movements up and down there, given the removal of the carcasses, et cetera, that was outlined by Councillor? Love it. Well, look, I'll, I'll say it, it is uh, probably there's a technical question there, but I mean, councillors are entitled to ask because the main issue is whether we can respond to it at this time. Probably putting a bit of pressure on you, Mr. Ability. Do you want to take it on notice or are you open to sit something you can comment on now? I'm happy for you to take it on notice if you feel like I'm happy. Uh, thank you for the question is that coming through yeah. thanks for the question councillor in terms of the the first question I'll, I'll have to take that on notice um at this point in time to come back to you in terms of the the road aspect of things um the conditions clearly state that they have to upgrade sections of the road and they will be held responsible for doing that aspect of things but then after a point in time once that's handed over and it meets all our engineering standards 
um, we will then um, have responsibility for the maintenance of the road from there on. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Any other, any other councillors? Um, okay. Thank you. See you. Sorry, through there. I just thought I'd answer one of the questions though. On um, uh, permit condition number 25 notes that all dead birds must be disposed of off site or managed on site to the satisfaction of the EPA. So the <coughs> EPA have a role there, uh, Councillor Lavella. Thank you. Thank you, Vacation. Uh, uh, um, any other any other comments from councillors at all? Councillor Spell. Uh, just to add, um, yeah, we see on numerous occasions, and they're not particularly any shy, but all these conditions are generally put into applications, and once they're approved, the, the conditions are not, uh, are not necessarily met. So uh, basically just want to say that we need the operators of these facilities to be good corporate citizens and the council also need to police these conditions where possible. Mm. Uh, uh, therefore, and obviously our statutory services uh, sitting in the uh, disturbing area has a key responsibility there for that. Any other, any other comments for councillors at all? If not, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carry it. Item 8.9, Integrated Water Management Strategic Direction Statements and Regional uh, regional Policy Statements that have come out. Uh, councillors seeking a motion. Councillor Sproul. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that uh, Council endorse the Central, Gold, Central Highland Strategic Direction Statement 2022 and the Colburn Strategic Direction Statement 2022. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Sproul, a seconder. Councillor Bella, thank you. Councillor Sproul. Uh, through the Mayor. Uh, Central Goldfield Shire Water Management for 22 organisations, Colburn Water and the Central Highlands Water. Each organisation is part of 10 regional integrated water management forums under the Integrated Water Management Framework with Victoria 2017. Uh, these strategic direction statements provide some data on the region they cover, but also identify opportunities, track progress, and provide information about water management going forward. Water use and conservation is critical, so it's good to have these strategic statements and partnerships to provide clarity on our water's future. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Council Sproul. Councillor Bella? Nothing to add. Of, of any other councillors? I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Carried. Item 8.10, Audit and Risk Committee by Annual Report to Council. Seeking a motion, councillors? Councillor Murphy? As um, being part of this committee, um, since we came to council, um, I'm also I'm always very happy to be on it with the, the members, the officers, and um, and the, the reports we get, but also around the table, making it accountable, making us accountable. The the councillor, if you just if I can interrupt you, you see the motion, and then oh, I'm sorry, yeah. didn't I didn't just say that. Um, I lost my mind. Well, that, that's all right. I'll have to take a motion for what can happen for this. Have you wanted to put the motion? <laughs> the Chancellor the Councillor received a note the order of this committee by annual report to Council. Thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. A second to that. Councillor Murphy, back to you again. So being on being on this committee for since its inception was Council Lovett. Very happy to um, uh, recommend this report. But what I always find interesting when we're around the table, that uh, that how good our um, three um, outside members are, and um, very very um, happy with uh, their qualifications. But also one of them's just become a, a municipal monitor somewhere, and he's also part of this. And, and and they just bring so much insight to uh, to our our council and our audit and the risk. And um, the times I get there and I'm going, well, I'm going to talk about this, and uh, one of them comes up and talks about it for me. So invariably, that 
everyone's reading the documentation, understanding it, and um, we've um, we're going forward with it. Sometimes you're thinking going forwards and back and forwards and back and backwards a little bit and forwards a little bit, but they're very good. It's very good. And I like to put this recommendation to council and um, and um, go forward with it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I echo all Councillor Murphy's comments. Thank you very much. Are the councillors? No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Uh, now, that completes the all the officers' reports. We have under uh, we moved to, uh, item 9, notice of motion. And we have one 9.1 in relation to 52 Ross Street, Mary Murphy Council of And we note that Council Sproul has declared a conflict of interest. So we note that at uh, 702, Councillor Councillor Sproul has left the chamber. Councillor Lovett, inviting you to formally present your notice of motion. Thank you, Mr. May. I move. One, council recognises that the supply of Greenfield and urban fringe residential housing land in Miraburra is critically low. Two, council notes a receipt of a request for a planning scheme amendment and combined planning permit application the owner, the landowner of 52 Ross Street, Miraburra to rezone the land from rural living zone to general residential zone and subdivide eight hectares of land on the northern fringe of Miraburra for residential purposes. Three, council recognises that the application received from the landowner of 52 Ross Street, Miraburra is proponent funded and that the technical assessments and other fees will be at the expense of the landowner. Four, council support the allocation of officer resources as deemed appropriate to oversee the proponent funded application process. Five, if this motion is carried, officers, officers will present to council a regular update about the progress of the combined planning scheme amendment and planning permit application for 52 Ross Street and six council officers to arrange a meeting at the earliest convenience between the proponent, the CFA and appropriate representatives of council to discuss the potential for the site of 52 Ross Street, Mariborra to be rezoned and developed for residential purposes to respond to Council's residential land supply issues. Thank you, Councillor Lover. The second of the motion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Lover, I'd like you to talk to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. State planning policy require Council to maintain 15 years of residential land. In January 2020, a supply demand assessment concluded Mariborra had between eight to 12 years supply of broad hectare residential land. My belief is that the current land housing boom in Mariborra has further impacted our land supply problem. North of Wirriki Rise, there is a parcel of land, 52 Ross Street, identified as far back as 2012 as and I quote, the only land remaining in Mariborra for substantial broad acre residential development. This outcome was confirmed by further reports in 2014 and again in 2020. In August 2018, the proponent wrote to the Shire seeking their support for a pro proponent led planning scheme amendment to rezone the land from rural living zone to general residential zone. Current council plan 2021 to 2025, I quote directly from it, a strategic priority is to retain, grow 
and attract our population by ensuring sufficient land is zoned for residential growth, providing incentives to retain young people within the Shire. That's in our current council plan. The proponent has a proven track record of getting things done. He has created some 470 residential lots locally. Of these, 380 have either been built on or have seen construction commenced. Let me put some meat on the bones. These 380 homes have generated economic activity of between 130 to $150 million within our Shire. Work for carpenters, plumbers, electricians, concreters, tilers, the list goes on. Employment for apprentices, along with many of the consumables being purchased locally. And as per the council plan, Many of these homes are owned by young families, allowing them to both live and work within the Shire. The 90 remaining vacant lots currently, and these figures don't include the 69 lots at Ross Street, the remaining 90 vacant lots will be snapped up, bringing a further $40 million of activity to our Shire. But let's look closer to home. Each of the 470 lots are already attracting council rates. I estimate between 1.2 and $1.4 million annually comes into council coffers, coffers from these 470 lots created by this developer. What I find unfathomable fathomable, is why there is a need for council to be even discussing this issue tonight. The proponent has already declared he will pay all costs associated with the section 96A planning scheme amendment. He has already completed several reports such as proposed land subdivision, a bushfire development report, traffic impact assessment, native vegetation removal report, and a stormwater management plan. All these reports are finished and waiting to be acted on. What the proponent is seeking from the Shire is to be able to liaise closely with Shire staff using their expertise to ensure that this application and land development project is progressed expeditiously. It must be acknowledged that the Shire has received government funding for a view of all planning overlays Shire-wide. This work is absolutely necessary and will still proceed. However, I believe that process, that review, will take many years to complete, even longer for it to be implemented. Today, we have a motion before us that will bring unquestioned benefits to residential land availability in Meribara, land that is needed now. Interestingly, I note that currently, today, eight out of 10 residential sales within the Shire are being made in Meribara. These are both out of town inquiries and local. Their first priority is to build in town. This will change over time, but not immediately. I commend this motion very strongly to you. Thank you very much, Councillor Lovett. Uh, Councillor Lovett, <coughs> I really can't add anything to what Council Lovett has said. I concur with him and I concur that we need land. We need to be able to house people. 
and I concur how much money has gone through to, and the, the millions of dollars that the builders and the building fraternity and um, everyone just keeps ticking on and and the rates it's so right and the rates it helps helps us as a council um, do things so the more we do and then this last bit of land here is that um, we need it because uh, people are coming to the town people are coming to the area <coughs> people want to build here we've got young people like i've had three four staff at the down in Quirky Rice, and they're still wanting to get their land down there and build their house down there. So, um, so I concur, Councillor Lovett. Councillor Murphy, other councillors? Councillor Lovett. Well, I just, you know, listening to what both Councillor Lovett and Councillor Murphy said, you know, I've got it down to a few dot points. It is well known in this shire we are extremely short of housing stock, both for purchase and rental. We have a proponent who will pay associated costs, who has done and still doing. The developer plans are shovel ready. To me, this would be a massive contradiction given our council plan, our future vision for the next 10 years, if we don't approve of this recommendation of this motion notice of motion it's just a no-brainer as far as i'm concerned yet again thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you Smith. i would just like to add that um, i think this is a very exciting development and it was fascinating to listen to the proponent um, when he explained what he's done and how far it is with um, his planning. And uh, I would sincerely hope that we could um, speed up the process for the proposal to see this happen quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Villiers. I think the only one to add and in support of the uh, motion is that it's pleasing to note that the office is already getting on with that, that final part of it and the organising event. I think it's this week, yeah. is it? So it's already. And we're already making good progress to acknowledge the contribution of officers. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion is carried. Yeah, Thank you. you. Uh, we'll bring cash for Scrawl back. I'm going to bash it and leave people out. <laughs> I know. I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah, what happened to Cole, man? Right. I'm glad to have that on my, on my conscience. Thank you. We note that Councillor Sproul uh, is <laughs> the chamber as uh, at 7 12 p.m. Councillors, uh, urgent business. Urgent business. There is no confidential business. Therefore, at 7 13 p.m., I will declare the meeting closed. Thank you to all who have attended. Thank you, Councillor Bella. In distant parts, you may go to bed now, Councillor Bella. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you to all who joined us in, in uh, our gallery, <laughs> gallery and actual gallery. Thank you. Safe journey back tomorrow. Thank you. Are you blind? I might miss my plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleep in. <laughs>